All right, all right, Fishaholic fam. Well, welcome back to another episode. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Rich, and if you enjoy this video in the end, please hit that subscribe and that like button. And also, you might as well hit it if you wanna win it, because in this video, I'm giving away uh, this brand new Ridge wallet. And all you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel, hit smash that like button and comment down below. And one week from this uploaded date, I will uh, randomly select one winner to send that wallet out to. And here's what we got going on today. I'm actually on my way back to the launch right now. We already did our fishing mission, left Montauk at like 3 a.m., got up here to the North Fork of Long Island and launched the, the kayak at first light. Didn't wanna waste time with an intro because I wanted to try and get on a top water bite. And uh, in a couple hours from now, we're hopping on a ferry and then going to New London and then gonna be up in Vermont tomorrow for my buddy's wedding. And then after that, I think gonna stop in Rhode Island for a couple of days to do some fishing and then eventually come back to Long Island and uh, you know back, be back out in Montauk. So uh, that's kind of the plan. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna switch it over now. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And again, be sure to hit that like and that subscribe button. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, all right. Well, just about made it to our first spot. It's a little after 6 a.m out here kind of late, left Montauk at like 3 a.m., wanted to leave at like 2 a.m. so we could get out here at like 5 or 5.30, but uh, I was a little tired. Uh, so, at least we made it. And uh, I'm gonna start by just throwing this big top water dark matter spook as we drift with the outgoing tide by this rocky line point. And uh, this is actually the first time I'm fishing this area in the kayak. So I'm intrigued uh, to see what we could catch. And right there looks like some big boulders and maybe a fish right on top of them. That's a good sign, that looks good. But uh, yeah, here's a closer look at this big spook we're starting out with. And I'm hoping, you know, on some of the submerged boulders right off this point, there will be uh, some big striped bass or just at least some striped bass doesn't have to be big we're really just trying to catch anything and there might also be some blue fish that looks like a nice big boulder you know there could be some nice fish on this structure and uh, the last time i fished this area was probably a couple years ago from the surf and that was in the fall too so like all that knowledge pretty much kind of goes out the window being that it's mid-june right now so you know we're really here to explore and see what we can learn and find and discover and uh, being that it's early we're starting with the top water and I'm hoping uh, we'll be able to find a few biters on it and we'll probably throw it for like the next uh, hour or two you know because we've got like really good prime top water conditions like early morning foggy overcast skies and it's like post storm conditions as well it uh, rained a little bit last night and uh, fortunately it didn't like, you know, drop the air temperature at all. Like things kind of stayed consistent. Oh, it's got some good action. I can't wait until we get some big explosions with this plug, but uh, unfortunately no bites at this first point. So we're gonna move down about a quarter mile to the next one. Whew. All right, this is it. This is where we're gonna get the skunk out of the kayak. Come on, come on. Hmm. Something is telling me to give the JBR pencil a try. This looks like money here. Oh, there has to be 
some fish here, at least a blue fish. If I don't get any bites in this area, wow, look at that boulder right there, then I'm probably gonna switch to uh, maybe a shad or a bucktail. Oh man, we just fished probably about a mile and a half and not a single swirl. And now we've got slack water. So I think uh, we need to take off the top water and uh, try a different tactic to catch some fish today. And uh, we're gonna move down probably like another three quarters of a mile to a mile and uh, fish an area that uh, should have a nice rip and I'm thinking maybe we could throw a bucktail or put on a shad and I want to catch like the very beginning of the incoming tide because uh, you know I don't know how long we'll be able to fish this spot that where we're going uh, once the tide like really starts going so once we like catch the beginning of the incoming hopefully catch some fish then we'll you know ride the incoming tide back to uh, the launch. All right, that should catch him. All right, well, we finally made it to the furthest spot that we are gonna fish today, and that is Plum Gut, which uh, I've actually never fished ever before in the kayak. I've fished, uh, you know, from shore, and I'm really excited to finally be here to uh, hit it in the kayak, because I've heard a lot of great things about this area, and uh, I'm uh, intrigued to try and pick it apart for the next couple hours and see if we can catch some fish here and get it done. There's a fish. Oh, we lost them. No way. Oh my gosh. I think we had, I don't know, a blue fish on possibly? Yeah, we got some teeth marks on here and then something big followed it in. Looked like a, you know, upper slot size bass. There's a fish. Oh. Okay, finally. Found our first little striper. Not big, but hey, it's a start. And it looks like we got some more of his buddies down there on the screen. some nice marks right there so I put the drive in reverse I'm gonna try just vertical jigging right on top of these guys come on come on oh got that one this one surprised me a little bit Jeez, where's your mother, little guy? Oh, 
Oh, that didn't take long. Wow. Another diaper striper. All right, we pretty much have these guys figured out, it seems like. But where are the bigger guys? So we've been catching the diaper stripers primarily between like 15 and like 16 feet of water, like up towards the head of the rip. So I'm gonna go up to like 20 foot. We drifted out into like 25 right now. So we're gonna go to 20 foot and start our drift there and uh, like drift back and vertical jig. Like here looks like a good mark right there, like much bigger than what we're catching, unless that's bait. But I don't know, we'll find out hopefully if we, uh, Jig the deeper depths, maybe we could find like some slot size stripers. I was content that we didn't have any yet so far today. All right, well, I guess we can say goodbye to this shed, but hey, you know what? I wanted to make a little modification anyway because this current is really starting to cook, so. I was gonna clip off this three quarter ounce jig head. And actually, you know, my, my leader is kind of short, but I was gonna put, I'm gonna put this one and a half ounce shad on. And then I'm just gonna lengthen my 50 pound floral leader to probably about like three or four foot. And then we'll tie this baby on. And uh, this will be a lot better for working the deeper depths. Didn't take long with the heavier jig. Oh, it's a blue again. Dang, man. Might say goodbye to this jig head. He looks like he ate it deep. I'm surprised he hasn't cut me off yet. Bit bigger blue. Absolutely mangled the shad. All right, for whatever reason, the bluefish are really liking the shad on the heavier jig head, or it's maybe the time of the tide. But um, yeah, we're gonna clip this off and I think try just a little bucky right now and I think I'll put maybe on like a little gulp as a trailer. All right, look at that little bite size morsel. You can't tell me that a 30 plus inch bass wouldn't want to eat that. And you know what? I'm actually gonna trim the hair on the bucktail just a little bit so that tail Sticks out just a little more. Oh yeah. That's gonna be All right, so I actually had to move in from the main current flow of the rip. It's starting to get really strong out there and I'm getting tired of fighting the current. And we were just getting bluefish, so we're gonna try just working the edge of the rip. 
where it's a little bit more manageable to fish. There he is. On the bucky. That didn't take long. Oh, probably the biggest schoolie so far the outing. Ate the bucky. What's up, buddy? There you go. A little better. So basically all I was doing on that last cast is I casted it up current, counted down to like 10, and then I started just popping it as it's swinging with the current. That fish crushed it on the drop as it was swinging and drifting further down. That was a hard hit. Probably another schoolie though, <laughs> but he hit like a big in. What are you doing, buddy? Your mama's got to eat too. Fishaholics. Well, unfortunately, we ended up calling it quits after that last one, and we're on our way back to the launch. Probably got a two, two and a half mile pedal back, which I'm really not looking forward to. And I wish I could stay longer, but we've got to catch our ferry to New London and then be up in Vermont tomorrow for my buddy's wedding. And then after that, I think we'll head to Rhode Island for a couple days, do some fish and filming, and then head back to the uh, North Fork here. Maybe hit the plum gut again being that we learned something today. Didn't catch anything big, but we got on a bite, so I'm stoked about that. And then eventually we'll head back to Montauk because I got some charters on the schedule. Uh, definitely check out uh, the links down in the description if you're interested in a Montauk uh, light tackle inshore charter on uh, the Fishaholic rig. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, you guys can appreciate my effort that I put into today because I was very close to just turning back around after we didn't get on a you know top order bite in the first like mile of shoreline area that we fished. But uh, I saw the gut in the distance and I was like, it's meant to be for today. We had to hit it for the first time in the kayak and I'm glad we got it done. So uh, thanks for watching and like always, live to fish, fish to live.